Yes, greetings and welcome to everyone here. That is how I choose to start this afternoon's discussion slash engagement with the brother that you're seeing in the frame right now. He will be telling you his name in just a bit. Living in the positive, yes, and we all have to try our very best to live in that positive. Dominicans, we're about to have a very, you know, candid conversation as it were with this brother in just a bit. And so all I ask of you now, those of you already here, please share that live information. Make others know that that discussion is on right now. Uh, without much delay, let me just dive right into it and see. A special good afternoon to you, brother. How are you? I'm blessed. Good afternoon, Lofty. Good afternoon. Thanks for uh, accepting me here today. Um, I'm doing fine. I'm blessed. I'm doing good. You're blessed, you're doing good, and you have a big, broad smile to go with that. that that's even better. Yeah, of course, you've got the glory. Yeah, indeed. Uh, brother, as we get into it here, uh, let me just ask you to tell the viewing and listening public what's your name and just who you are. Okay, my name is Landa Bruno. I am the longest serving dialysis patient in Dominica. I will be 24 years of dialysis in um October of this year, October, November this year. I will be celebrating 24 years since I have a medical condition, which is kidney problem. I'm not saying that I'm sick, lofty, because I'm here. If I was sick, I would be in the hospital lying or go at my home. Right. So I'm not sick. I have kidney problems. I'm on dialysis. Okay. But that do not mean that I'm sick. Okay. But you have a health condition. I have a Did medical it? condition. I take in my, my treatment, and I'm very well fine. Okay, where where you hail from? What part of the country are you from? I'm from Wesley, Woodford Hill. My father from Woodford Hill, my mother from Wesley. Currently, I'm living in Portsmouth, Chance Portsmouth to be exact. Okay. All right. Well, brother, thanks for taking time off and coming to my studio this evening, this afternoon rather, and, you know, just wanting to tell your story as it were. Some persons may have heard your story already, but it's always good to get a refresher. And so I thank you very much. Let us just go back a little bit before we go forward. Just, just give us an idea of, you know, how, how far back um, have you been suffering or going through with that medical condition? Well, it's, uh, Lofty is in 2000. Mm -hmm. um, I get um, that news from my doctor. I was, I was a normal, healthy young man, walking up and down, doing my work. I was driving, chalk. And one day, I just feel like I'm losing the balance, I'm feeling giddy. So I went to the post hospital and do a test. And when I did the test, the doctor told me that my pressure was too high. It was over 200. So they asked me to go and um, rest from my work. I go home, I take my two weeks rest, and then go back to do my checkup again. Mm -hmm. When I went back to do the checkup, the head pressure was still high. So I said, Doc, I just married. I just um, built my home so I do have no stress. I want to do an investigation to know what causes my pressure to be high like that. They sent me to do a test in the, in the Princess Margaret Hospital. When I went there, they do some blood tests and then they sent me home. On my way home, I get a phone call that I did nurses in the hospital in Marriott want to see me. I went back to the Marriott Hospital and then that was the news that my both kidney, 95% of my both kidney not working. Wow. So, so before that, uh, did you felt any way? I wasn't feeling any way. I was feeling normal. I was feeling okay. It's just in that day, I was just feeling a little off balance, giddy. Like every time I bend my head, I feel my head spinning. And okay, like that. okay. So before that, I was not feeling like pain in my back or swollen in my legs or nothing. I would never have any swollen or pain or anything. And okay. rough, roughly, how old were you then? I was, uh, I think... Uh, between 25 and 25. 25, 25. Okay. Quite young. Very young, in my prime. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, how have you been coping since then? Well, in the beginning for me, it was um, uphill and downhill situation because uh, as a young man, I'm coming in to get that news that my kidney not functioning. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, there was not much education about what to expect or what to do, what not to do. was not much education about it. Like now, you will hear me talking all over the place and then people will get to know more about, um, like I, I educate and sensitize a lot of patients and a lot of people in the public about what 
is dial this number to skip it because of my experience of how long I'm on it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it was kind of an uphill downhill for me. But in 2002, I went back to drive bus. Okay. Because I was driving truck for a man hour and then I had to leave it off. And then 2000, 2003, I started back to drive. On, I drove until 2009 where I start to get a little difficulties with my first wife and then I get felt get a little worse because of the stress and the pressure. Yeah. So I stopped driving bus from 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 2013. Then 2014 I went back to drive. That is five years later. Okay? So it was kind of a rough in the beginning, but I thank God for his message today. Um, I'm doing much, much, much better because um, health-wise, mm -hmm. um, my mental states, I'm doing much better. A um, couple of years ago, I was driving a bus, driving a passenger bus, and then I had a lot of discrimination and stigmatization because there's a lot of stick that medical condition there have been stigmatized. Mm -hmm. Okay, as long as people know over oh, here that you have kidney problem, they write you off. Like I did that, or that's so bad, that's a bad, bad sick place, and they expect you to see you kahu, mm -hmm. who almost ready to give up. Down and out. Down and out. Ready to give up on you. Yeah, so um, if, even um, people don't even believe that they shouldn't touch you too hard. Okay. Okay? Or you shouldn't be even walking too much on the road because then um, you're sick, you should be resting, you should be lying down. Okay? So I really want to, I really try many years now to try to knock off that narrative that people with kidney problem on dialysis are no longer capable of doing anything. Okay. okay. I want to tell you, there was a man that told me a couple years ago in the hospital, after a year I married again, mm -hmm. that is wicked I'm wicked. Why are you just let, let it be? Why want to have wife and child now and why can't feed them, why can't take care of them? Just let it be and let God do his work. And whatever, if he die, die, die. You understand? There was a next man that tell me, who going to pick up a sick bird? You understand? There was a lot of people that believe that I should... I, I was driving bus and people used to pass me and afraid to ride my bus, afraid to even talk to me. People, some people were enemy, vexed with me today because they never wanted to ride my bus. Mm -hmm. Okay? That I was full fix and this and that. And it was it's not true. Okay? You can be productive as long as you take your medication. You watch what you do, what you what you eat, mm -hmm. how much you eat and how much you drink. And you can be productive. Because right now I can think that I just read the video. Yeah. Okay? And I, I, I drive in. I do almost everything. I run in. I did a, uh, I did an exercise with my wife and I sent the video for the doctor in Antigua. And he tell me, think is you see what I was running. Wow. Okay? During that, during that journey, Mr. Bruno, yeah. um, was there any time you felt like afraid for your life, meaning you just pass out any time, you just no. die because of that? No. I never felt so. Because you know why? I will tell you why. I'm a praying person. Mm -hmm. Okay? I stayed two months and a half in the hospital in 2012. And I was wearing pampers. I wasn't doing any, couldn't do anything for myself. Okay. And I used to pray hard and ask God to deliver me and give me the strength to come back on my foot. That's why I'm here today. Mm -hmm. So I never give up. I never had give up in my vocabulary. Okay. Wow. So I always a strong minded person. Mm -hmm. So I never think of one day, boy, I, I won't pass out. No. I, I never have that in my mind. So you're saying you you faced a lot of stigmatization, stigma, and discrimination, as a, a result lot of that, of that yes. medical condition. A lot of that, a lot, a lot. Of why why do you think so? The persons would write off certain persons who go through that situation? because they have the education. The education level is poor. Okay. Instead of you 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 try to write off somebody, find out what is the situation. What is the, what what find out because you never know. Who can come on dialysis? You never know. Who can get kidney problem? You never know. We have nurses, we have doctors, we have police, we have you never know who. Okay? Then how much businessman reach on dialysis in Dominica and die? So you never know. You never know. So instead of you 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 say that 
um, like for instance, I was here, Mr. Ozzy, I, I, I don't even mind. I was here, Mr. Ozzy had some issues with his program and thing and then. When I, when I read it on, on DNO, it was sad because of his medical condition. His medical condition had nothing with doing with his signal and have a commercial with you. Okay? His medical condition had nothing. If, when you have kidney problem, oh, dialysis, lofty, mm -hmm. anytime you occupy yourself, you get something to occupy yourself, it helps you mentally. Okay. Okay? So if one like, well, well, time I was at home, all of a sudden my phone scrolling, scrolling on Facebook, and I fed up, mm -hmm. and I get my head pressure go high, and I start to get frustrated and thing. I don't pick up my home, my cutlass, and my, my, my pickaxe, and I go below my garden, below my house, and I start to do my home and clean up, clean up, clean up until I find some little thing, and that helped my mind from just there saying, why not working, I feel frustrated and thing. So if you don't can get something to do to me help your mental state, is a plus. It will help you to survive that medical condition better. Yeah. I make sense? Yeah, sure, sure. At least the, the mind is occupied. Occupied. Uh, within your journey thus far, have the medical professionals pointed out any situation to you that may have caused that situation? Yes. Well, I have um, polycystic kidney disease. Mm -hmm. uh, polycystic kidney disease is a medical condition that can be inherited from your for fathers, generation, generation is um, when you have cysts on the kidneys, okay. and the cysts suck the kidneys until there is no more function. Wow. Okay. There is two type. There is um, the two main thing for kidney problem across the world is diabetes and high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have diabetes and high blood pressure and it's uncontrollable, you never control it. You never take care of yourself properly. You keep on living because a lot of people are second way diabetes. I have already one life till if I die, I die. Mm -hmm. But if you don't take care of yourself and then you get kidney problem, die not one life, there is two life. Because if you have the medical condition, you ignore it and then you have to come hospital three days and we can lie down on a machine for three and a half hours, four hours a day. You understand? So there is not one life again, there is two life. If you're going to die, boop, for long, boop and die, that is one life. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to suffer, it's not one life. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? So diabetes and high blood pressure are the two main causes for kidney problems. And other things can cause you to get kidney problems. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's other things. But diabetes and high blood pressure is the main cause for kidney problems around the world. So your and so your 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 how have you been attending to that situation in terms of medical care through the system, the healthcare system in Dominica? Well how have you been treated? Well, well, the treatment is go dialysis three days a week. Uh -huh. Stay three and a half hours. I stay in three and a half hours. There's two people that stay in three hours. There's people that stay in four hours. Okay? But I take in my three and a half hours for the past 24 years this year. Okay? okay? And there three, are other three, supplements. Three and a half hours, three days a week. Three days a week. Okay. And there's other supplements that you have to take. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you have to take, because, in the, because the kidney, it has to supposed to, um, um, help the body to absorb calcium and um, um, all the other things and then it's still doing the work with, with um, cleaning the blood. So long the kidney can no longer do the work, then your dialysis is coming. Okay. Okay? And then we take in, we, we have to take our calcium or phosphate, alpha calcidol, folic acid, uh, calcium carbonate, and this and that. And the, if whoever has pressure will be on different pressure medication and mm -hmm. things like that. Okay? But in the meantime, your diet is one of the most important things as a dialysis patient. Diet is what that tells you how long you live and how well you live as a dialysis patient. Okay? So if you want to just continue eating your normal lifestyle, because you're supposed to be on a low potassium diet. Eh? So if dry feet full of potassium and you have to go eat how much dry feet, mm -hmm. and then the kidney machine are too, the kidney cannot filter it. So the machine has to work like a vacuum mm -hmm. to filter it for you, to help to clean you. You will still be under pressure. Your heart can be aff affected, your lungs, your liver. So it is, is, um, your diet is what is what the most important thing that tells you how when you go as a dialysis patient and how long you live as a dialysis patient. Okay. Talking, on, talking about diet as we're there, what are some of the foods that you need to take in? What are some of the foods you need to stay away from? Okay. I stay away from ripe bananas, mm -hmm. high, high in potassium. I stay away from coconut water, 
too high in potassium. I stay away from most of the green leaf vegetables, things like lettuce and them thing there because um, because in the because of all the dialysis, the dialyzers, the dialysis, artificial kidney um, situate. Okay. You have to put in less of those high potassium food so you will get less clots oh. in the dialyzer. Okay. You understand? Because potassium clots your blood fast. Mm -hmm. Okay? Especially when you haven't got any kidneys. Okay? So I eat almost everything, but I prepare it at home. So, okay, for instance, I cook in provision. Mm -hmm. I will use so when you start to cook the plantain, the feet, the dash, and everything. Yes. Then I white water on top of it. What what is that? We start at the start, yeah. Okay. So what I do, I fry with a first water, I wash it out and I put it back to boil. When it boils, I don't leave the water, soak up back it, I fry with the second water. And I don't eat like a big bowl of food. I eat copper slices. You understand? So like my rice and everything, I wash my rice a couple of times. You check or put some little steam on, steam it out, wash out the water because then you wipe the wife, you right, the rice itself have a lot of starch in it. When you put the rice to boil, you see the white yes, starch yes, on the yes, 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 Okay? You can do your food so also too because I <laughs> history of kidney function the way, but you never know. Yeah. You understand? So there's a lot of things that I, I eat mostly all what I can eat, but I try my best to don't eat on the road. Understand? Because how I supposed to prepare my food, that's how that's not how they will do it in the restaurants for me. Understand? Okay. So I try my best to eat more on So if you, I come there and I see you have a bowl of appetite of food there, I'm not diving your kitchen come and eat your food. <laughs> okay? I have to discipline myself. Yes. I have to take. So if I was not disciplined, you would see my skin would be wasted away to be like saggy. Wow. Because enough how um when, when because of the kidney not functioning, the body, the body struggling to to die into to break down everything into uh, um how we're supposed to think you understand so that is the main um thing about um being a dialysis patient as part of it sure. yeah. so brother mentally now mentally because i mean to say that this thing started with you in 2000 you said around there yes uh, mentally, how have you been coping? How have you been managing with that shift in terms of your life you had before and the life that you have to adopt now? Well, uh, mentally, it is it come part of me mm -hmm. because of how long I'm, 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 I'm there. Okay? As I told you in the beginning, it was kind of uphill down for me. It was rough mm -hmm. as a young man. But um, because of how long I I on dialysis? Mentally, I I good. Okay. Okay, I good. Trust me, I good. I have no stress about it. I just not have to go to hospital Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I do that. Okay. When I come out to hospital, I run in. I just come out to hospital and run from hospital to put to bus stop in bus in on the on the Rosa bus stop. Mm -hmm. Okay. You walk down the hill. There's some people they cannot do that. Okay? Yeah. Because maybe there are different medical conditions and different things that are limiting them to mm -hmm. do. I run up to the floor. And I'm on dialysis. Okay. And I kind of touch the first step downstairs and tap it up upstairs to the floor. Okay? So mentally I see if I go, I have a nice young wife, a nice young family. Okay? And I see support is, is, is there. Okay? My family too, my sisters, um, they come on board and they give me the full support that I need. Uh, friends, a lot of friends that really supporting. Um, I have a lot of people. Uh, and for instance, I was raising funds. I raising funds for my kidney transplant, and the amount of help I get, I is it, is it, amazing. A lot of people that call me on a daily basis. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I feel in, I feel in blessed. I feel in I feel in confident. I feel in great. Um, I get an award, um, World Kidney Day this year okay. from the hospital. Okay, from the nurses and uh, my uh, Dr. James, Dr. Um, Dr. Paul James and and my like doctor, all of them. I get a, a award from them. Uh -huh. Okay, because of I'm the longest dialysis patient and I'm. One of the strongest. I'm, I don't know if I'm the strongest because I'm the serious and the most serious and the time. 
Okay? But I'm one of the person that, and I'm the, because I'm the longest, everybody look, look to me. Yeah. I am the whole of dialysis. I'm the face of dialysis. In that's good, that's good, that's good. So before we move forward, though, in terms of the help that you're seeking from the general public here and abroad, uh, let, me, let me ask you, though, in terms of the, the, the message that you want to leave with the general public, you being a dialysis patient, uh, a person suffering in that situation, going through that situation, this person shouldn't be written off as it were. No. You shouldn't be um, just, and it's, uh, it's sad because a lot of, even um, the promotion, the, the health promotion of, uh, they, they should do more to like, and try to sensitize people. Okay? Yeah. Or even is coming in, in the dialysis unit and dialogue with the patients to find out what can you do, how would be to help you, in what way. Nobody wants to touch dialysis and kidney problem. Nobody wants to touch it. I can tell you plain. Nobody wants to touch it. Nobody wants to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Nobody really. is. I that come up and go on mass, go on ready, you go on this and go on that. Nobody wants to touch it. Mm -hmm. Understand? They should not just put people up because I see what I've been through. Okay? And you need support, you need family support, you need support to really go through that, that, that thing. Yeah. You, we, are, we have a lot of young people that is on dialysis, and they're just going from dialysis to home. Some of them, they want people to know them on dialysis, they're on dialysis. Because before they to tell people somebody they're on dialysis, Papa, God, you saw you know, you're sick so now? <laughs> you're sick so? Mm -hmm. So it's sad, and then you should not just um, knock off people because then they are... They are on dialysis and they have kidney problems. Okay. So the taboo or the stigmatization or the victimization that goes with that, you're basically saying that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. Yeah. It should not be. All right. All right, bro. In let's look forward now in terms of the help that you need out there. Uh, you said your two kidneys, they are they are not functioning. Non functioning. How are you proposing? Who is proposing to help you out in that regard? Well, um, my wife is. Um, um, we did some tests. She wants to give me one of her kidney. We do some tests. We are compatible. Um, we were supposed to do the transplant in August of last year. But then in July, I think, they get a, the hospital in Antigua had a flooding in the theater. And mm -hmm. it, I never knew it was so much. But they had to do a lot of work in the theater, in the operating room. So from since August of last year to now, we have been on waiting, waiting up to last night I spoke to the doctor and he tell me he cannot give me a date, he can give me a time because if he don't know, he don't have the, he don't have the answer. Okay. And the only thing he telling me that whenever, if ever, then they have to give me all the tests to do over again. Okay. Lofty the test is very expensive. I did the compatibility test was five thousand three hundred and something dollars. Uh, die for my wife was eight thousand something dollars. So do you spend that? Re repeat that. What for your wife? A die. A die. Well, what is it's that? It's a, a, a test you have to do to see if they have to if she have any upcoming medical condition oh, okay. that will cause okay. her okay. to get kidney going to kidney failure oh, okay. after okay. she gives okay. the kidney. Okay. All right, that's understandable. So they, they have to blow up to put something in her vein and put her in a CT scan to oh, okay. see if there is anything that will cause her to go into kidney failure. Wow. Yeah. So your two kidneys are bad, your wife, both kidneys are okay. Yes. So she wants to give me one of them. Give you one. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. And in terms of the cost that you mentioned, we have to pay uh, we have to we have to raise a hundred and forty four thousand. Um and change that the, the one that for the and change was just for the kidney transplant for the for the surgery mm. the time we'll be staying at the hospital and one month those anti-rejection medication okay but after the surgery then we have to do get another um almost two thousand about two thousand plus that is for anti-rejection medication for the med for the kidney not to reject the body not to reject the kidney okay because when you put a new organ in the body um, look at the organ like a foreigner. Okay. So it had to attack. What you doing inside there? Get out. Mm -hmm. Get out. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that anti-rejection medication to prevent the kidney body to 
um, from rejecting reject it. From rejecting it's it. a suppressor. Okay. Okay, to suppress the immune system. Wow. That's a journey that um, you are you are facing. Yes. Uh, but I wish you all the best. I wish you all the luck there is. Uh, in terms of, I, I know you have been on a fundraising drive, and that is the primary reason you are here today. Yeah. Apart from, you know, telling persons about the whole situation that goes along with that. Roughly, how much money in terms of, you know, have you received so far in we, terms of contributions? We, get, um, we receive on GoFundMe mm -hmm. um, about 10000 something. Okay. And then um, we receive on, on what we collect. Yes. Approximately, after we do all the chest and so, mm -hmm. um, because we spend almost like 20 something thousand dollars to do tests and to go to Antigua and to do dialysis. And so we, we had a, a about uh, 17, 16, 17 thousand. And then the government said they will give us, um, they will give us 97, so they are proof for us from so security, 97 thousand something. So we were still missing like um, 90, 18 thousand, 19 thousand. Okay, roughly 20 thousand. Roughly 20 thousand. Okay. So that chunk from the government, the lump sum of We don't get, we don't receive that as yet because um, the social security said they was waiting for Antica to give us updates and the appointment. Okay. So that we can, they can pay Antica. Okay. Okay. They can pay it straight to Antica. Okay. Um, so because we haven't got the date and the time and everything as yet, mm -hmm. social security cannot release the funds to Antica until. That's like why I talked to the doctor last night to find out what is up and so on. Yeah, yeah. So I always keep it in touch with him to find out what is the next move and what we have to do. But right now, he asked us to go over mostly all the tests. Okay? I did a, a, I go on a treadmill in Antigua for $850 for 50 minutes. Wow. Okay? So the test is very, 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 the test is a lot. Okay? To go back, if I have to go and do over all the tests now, trust me, I will not have enough. I really have to go back to the public. Because I won't have enough to do the surgery and to buy the antibiotic medication. Then we have to have enough money to stay in Antigua because we cannot stay around people. We have to be in an isolated like place that because after the kidney transplant, my immune system is going to drop to almost like zero. So I have to wear a mask and I have to be we have to do connect with anybody. Okay, so um, that is the situation. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. But for now it's Antigua. Um, the doctor, we stay keeping in touch with him. Um, he said he's going to send us the test that we have to do over. Okay? I really wouldn't like to do over this test because that's going to show me back to, mm -hmm. to right where I was a couple of years ago. He used up some of the funds that you so need. Yes, to do over the test and do uh, so it's going to be troublesome for us. Okay. Wow. So basically, you're appealing to the general public by and large for at least you say twenty thousand easy dollars, yes, easy, yes. mm -hmm. easy dollars. Um, but if, if if there is anything and um, the doctor in Antigua give us the dates, then because of the time he's going to do whatever he's going to do, we ask him to do it now because if we do it now and then we have to go over the tests, mm -hmm. then the funds we have we are going to use it up to do over the tests. Okay. And then we're only depending on what government promise. Okay. Yeah. Wow. What government uh, approve? Well, they don't promise they approve it for us. Yeah. Wow. Well, just before I get to you, Brother Bruno, in terms of your final comments, um, let me just see if I could get some of the comments on the live feed. Uh, Miss Leaf, I may say, lovely ask him when he gets the one kidney, he can receive, when he gets the one kidney, uh, he can receive another kidney from someone else. Basically, she's asking, when you get the one kidney, that's my interpretation mm -hmm. of a question, whether you can get another kidney from someone else. Well, I do Which know. is another process I, again. Yes. Which is another, another surgery and another, um, yeah. another fundraising because I've got, got insurance. Oh, okay, okay. If I had insurance, I would have to go to all that fundraising and yes, my insurance yeah. would have to recover yeah. from of the course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, someone else, let me just see. He's telling the truth. It's a lot of tests to go through. Um, let me just see if I can get some of the comments before I ask you to 
drop up here. Okay, I guess Lifam is asking another question, but you answered that already basically. I saw a comment from, I think, um, Wayne James earlier, basically saying that um, this man is just an example to all of us. Bro, keep strong. God's blessing all the time. That's Wayne James commenting. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, any other thing you want to add, bro, before we bring the you know, session I, to a wrap. I just want to say that kidney problem mm -hmm. or any medical condition you have. Oh, that. sorry. Your contact number is critical or, or your information to reach you. Okay. My number is 276 276 67 67 16 16. Okay. Or you can contact on 225 225 1825. 1825. Yes, that's my wife. Okay, folks, I'll be plugging that in the feed, the live feed before we end so you guys can have those two numbers. Yeah, so continue, bro. So I was want to say that um, kidney problem or any medical condition you have is not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. um, long as you take care of yourself properly, if doctor put you on a medication, take your medication. If you have kidney problems and you don't know, I don't say I'm the best, but you can take my number, you can call me. If you have anybody like that, I like to do that. I like to educate and sensitize people. I like to help people. To do what I'm doing, because if I can live 24 years, somebody else can live 30. Okay, so um, don't give up. If you have, if you ever reach an dialysis, so don't say you cannot. A lot of people here, for lofty, tell me they accept dialysis because of me. Okay. A lot of people accept dialysis when they hear me see me on the street. If you see me on the street, you will never know I'm on dialysis. So I the problem. Yeah. So your okay. strength, your sort of encouragement. Yes. Yes. To them. A lot of people, and I have a lot of respect regionally. Although, as we speak, I have a, a there is a, a, a dialysis association in Barbados, and I'm on the executive, on the not really on the executive, but I'm, I'm on the on the the association thing. I work with them, okay? Okay. And there is some other people from the U.S. I'm talking to some patients, Saint Vincent. I educate and sensitize patients from St. Vincent and they're doing very well on dialysis. Mm -hmm. Antigua, okay? So I've been a real pioneer and I'm, I'm trying to motivate and educate people because I really would like to see um, people do something that's making sense, not because they have kidney problems. Sure. Okay? Yeah. Take care of yourself properly. You guys, a lot of people come and die for my 24 years. A lot of people come and give up and die. Eat anything, drink anything and just die. Wow. Okay? I see a lot, a lot of that. After Maria left the, I walk I walk from Portsmouth to Rosal. You walk from Portsmouth to Rosal. After Maria. I start to walk eight o'clock in the night and I reach Rosal after eight, eight o'clock in the morning I reach Rosal after four o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. I have to go to river, water um, um and climb the mountain and all kind of a thing and and Thing I'm hard about dialysis. After that, I went to Antigua. Okay. I said two weeks ago dialysis. I'm gonna work. What kind of work you do now presently? Uh, my garden, mm -hmm. and I do a little taxi. That the car you see I have there. Okay. Is a friend of mine that helping me with a with a vehicle. Um, now and then a, a partner that have some cars also. Okay. So I asked him to give me a little help. So he does give me a little help to do a little taxi and like a thing like that. He go to give me a mini bus. To do my taxi and to do something. So I was trying to do something to help my family. My wife is working at Jolly the Pharmacy in Portsmouth. Okay. Okay. And we have one little girl. She going to. She was in St. Vincent, but she come down. So it's just trying to manage your life properly and take care of myself. I want to say really thank you, Lofty, for giving me that opportunity. And I want to say please, all dialysis patients, take care of yourself. Stay focused. Don't give up. Okay. No matter what, stay strong, don't give up. I mean, give God all the praise and all the honor. Every day you get up in the morning, give God thanks, because then you could do get up next day, and just be safe. Sure. Thank you very much. Brother Bruno, before I ask you for your final comments, you are for sure living in the positive. You have a positive attitude. So let's take a line or two from Nassio Fontaine, entitled Living in the Positive, and then your final Parting words, all right? Yes.
Yes, folks, living in the positive indeed. That is how this brother, Mr. Landa Bruno, has lived his life for the past 24 years, being a dialysis patient, dealing with this medical condition, his kidneys. Both kidneys has failed, but he show for sure living in the positive and being an encouragement as well to a lot of persons out there. You heard him say just that a while ago. Brother Bruno, just repeat the amount of money that you're, you're, you're looking for, you want contributed to your cause, uh, your contact number, and your final parting words, brother. Well, um, I will say that we're looking for at least $18,000, $19,000, that's a 20. Mm -hmm. um, my number is 276-6716, 276-6716. My wife's number is 225-1825. Um, I want to say thanks to all the people that contributed um, so far already. I really appreciate it with my family, on the behalf of me and my family. I want to say thank you very much to all those people that contributed, a lot of people contributed, Dominica, overseas. Thank you very much. May God bless you. May God continue to favor you and give you more so that you could help more people like me. And that's um, what I want to say. Thanks very much, everybody. All right, my brother. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best. All right? Yes, God bless you. Bro. Thank you. Take care.